going to establish the most basic convergence test for series that if sigma an converges, then the limit of the terms in the series must equal to zero. So in particular, if the limit of the terms in a series is non-zero, you know that the series can't possibly converge. Now intuitively, this may make sense. For example, if all the terms are non-negative, if they don't approach zero, um, then you know the sum couldn't possibly, the sum would keep going to infinity. On the other hand, what if the terms are sometimes negative and sometimes positive and there's some weird cancellation, the series somehow converges even if the terms doesn't converge to zero. Let's put to bed everything in this video, a rigorous mathematical proof and a very simple argument that I like for why this works. So we'll just have to dig into what it means for a sum to converge. So for a sum to converge, well basically, so here's the proof. So let's first think about what it means for a sum to converge. So I look at the partial sums of a series. SK is A1 plus A2 plus dot 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 plus AK. This is the sum of the first K terms in the series. And if sum AN converges, that's the same as saying sigma an converges. And this is, of course, you know, when we don't specify parameters, we're summing all of them. So it's n varies from 1 to infinity. But that happens precisely when the limit of the sequence of partial sums, limit k goes to infinity of sk, exists. OK, um, so that's what it means for the sum to converge. So what we do is, if we know the sum converges, we're now going to use this property to show that the limit of the terms has to equal, things, equal to zero. And that's actually a very beautiful argument. If we look at the partial sums, right, sk, we know that sk plus 1, so I'm just going to write it here, sk plus 1 minus sk is going to equal to ak plus 1, right? That's going to be the difference between two successive partial sums is the k plus first term in the series. Now, what we do is, we know that therefore the limit as, so here I'm just going to write, the limit as k goes to infinity of a k plus 1 is just going to equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of the difference. Okay, the difference of s k plus 1 minus s k. And now what's super cool is we know limit laws. We know that each of these limits converges. The limit of this sequence of partial sums is just the sum of the series. So let's say the sum a n converges and it's equal to a. So let's write here that sum a n is equal to a. Doesn't really matter. The point is that using limit laws, this is equal to limit k goes to infinity of s k plus 1 minus limit k goes to infinity of s k. And since each of these partial sums is going to go to, or each of these partial sums is going to go to the sum of the series, which is a, we know this is a minus a, which is just equal to zero. So therefore, we conclude the limit of the terms in the, in the series is going to equal, equal to zero. And that works irrespective of whether the terms are positive or negative. I've just given you a proof here. I like it. Super simple, super quick. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and I hope you love the video. I've got lots of videos on real analysis. I'm building up a library of math on my channel at all levels of math, um, not just in, you know, real analysis, but all different areas of math, proof-based math. I'm a research mathematician, so I'm trying to help people, help support people, change lives through math education, and help people at all levels. So please share, like, subscribe. There's something for everyone. So if you share with friends, family, students, classmates, there'll be something for them. And I want to grow my channel to help support as many people as possible. Wish you all the best. I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.